What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Little Revolution. My name is Poncha Moeller. I'm here with my fantastic other host, Wee Man. Yeah. What's going on, brother? How are you? I'm good. I've been okay. really good lately. We've How are you? Wait, we've been, I've been, I'm good, man. I'm good. good. Thanks for asking. Good, we've, good. We're going to get right to it We've because we've been really looking forward to having our next guest. I met her at the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. Her film was actually one of the nominees. Um, she owns her own production company. She's also a star of Love on the Spectrum. Let's welcome Danny Bowman. Hi, 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 hi Poncho. It's really nice meeting you. Nice, nice, nice oh. seeing you again. Yeah, nice to <laughs> you too. Nice meeting you, Danny. Yeah, yeah nice. nice to meet you. I'm Jason. And thank you so much for having me be part of Little Revolution. It's such like a fantastic and podcast. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. you. You just watched little clips of it. Oh, yes, indeed. Like okay. a little bit and especially what to expect and especially especially it's like fun little conversation, yeah. little chats, a yeah. little bit more about catching up of what we've, um, what we've have. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm little, my voice is a little bit. Do you need some water or something? Actually, I'm fine. Okay, cool. All right. I need just to keep going. Yeah. yeah that's so fine. don't worry about it. You know, just, you know, we're, we're here to have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we're, we're trying to make you feel as comfortable as possible and just have an ordinary conversation like we are eating dinner at a diner or something. Oh, catching that's up. great. That's how, that sounds fun. All right. Thanks, All right. Poncho. When you met Poncho, it was at the film festival. He said you put a movie out. What was this movie about? This um, short film is called um, The Home Office. The Home Office is basically of imagining what if um, animated cartoon characters work together in the same office. But then as you could see, it kind of looks like, and then eventually you begin to find out that you get to see behind the scenes of um, eight, there, there are um, nine of us, Nine out of 12 of us on the autism spectrum working together to create this short film. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. It was, a, it was a mockumentary, too, like Dwarf of Psychosis. Yeah. Her film that she created with her team was uh, an, an animation because that's what she, yeah. that's her field right mm -hmm. there. So it was a pretty cool film and she made it. And and uh, her animation team that was that brought something to the project they were from all all different parts of the u.s right? that is true we have um, yeah. phoebe from um, england we have like arturo and mark and brenna from florida we have um kira from san diego we've got morgan from phoenix and keaton yeah. is also from florida but he moved but he's now living in um, new mexico mm. now do you still do you always work with the same group or do you have your own group of people that you work with here in los angeles well um, we do have um, various people from different parts of the world, and we do have um, Sandy and I do have Sandy and Patrick. I'm working with me locally. Sandy being your aunt. Yes, Sandy Vielma. Okay. And That's Patrick cool. Miller. And that is that we work together like closely. We all three of us we work. We have like what it's called the home office. Okay. Let's take it home office for real. Like the home base. Yes, home cool. base. What, were you the one who decided you wanted to make this movie? Was this movie your idea? That was my idea, and so was um, Sandy's idea. We came. We've been like um, brainstorming the ideas ourselves together, and we uh -huh. have. And Brenna Werner, who is the head of story of um, the Home Office, had a wonderful idea, and she was thinking about the Office idea, which is something that I fascinated. So when she says the Office, wow. I'm familiar with The Office, and especially because I've watched episodes of The the Office before. It's also funny yeah. in many ways. No, The Office is a good show. I love that show. Have you ever seen the uh, the British version, the original one? I haven't seen the original oh, British it's, it's version, really good. but it's, I would it's, love it's to see it. It's dirty. It's a little dirty. Yeah. And <laughs> a little bit uncomfortable, but it's 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 Ricky Gervais, man. It's, <laughs> it's comedy at its finest. Who's your favorite character on The Office? Well, um, if I were going to choose a favorite character, um, I, I don't have a particular favorite, but I love the character dynamics between, um, I forgot their names. I know who you're going to say. Who? That's because he's a handsome, tall man. Jim? You're going to say Jim. Jim. Jim and Pam. Right? Jim and Dwight. Jim and Pam. I oh, Jim and Dwight. Yeah, that's Jim and, I like the dynamics when Jim and Dwight Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's Jim another. and Dwight. Yeah. Well, speaking of um, Jim and Dwight, um, Jim and Dwight were actually the inspirations for the two characters in the home office. If you see the superhero guy, which Mark Mottawa um, voiced, um, that's 
that's the inspiration for Jim. And the mm. villain character was the inspiration for Dwight. Of course, he's a good uh, villain. Oh yes, they're they're a good duo. It's it's uh, they call it an acting two peas in a pod. Oh yes, you know you got the straight man, then you got the outrageous guy. But if you don't have those two guys, there's no conflicts. You know what I mean? So the story never goes anywhere. That's how Poncho and I are, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's why <laughs> this works goes well together. Yeah, yeah, because I'm the hero. Uh, and I'm the villain. <laughs> I'm the villain. Yeah. Um, um, and so you showed this movie, your short film, at the uh, Easter Seals Disability Easter, yeah. Film Challenge. And Poncho was showing his film. Dwarf of Psychosis, which yeah. I thought yours is pretty funny because yeah. you try to like convince your your bro your brother in the um, the movie. It's like it's yeah. convincing him that he's a normal person, but he thinks of a little person, yeah, yeah. which. <laughs> what do you? Of, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's so fitting. What do you? Uh, when I when I was talking to you earlier on the phone, uh, and you were like, "Where are you guys? Where are you?" And I was trying to explain with where you were. When I told you, I'm like, uh, "Just look for two midgets." Was that funny to you? <laughs> yeah, was it was kind of funny, but it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny. But at the same time, um, it's sometimes some people can find it derogatory. Yeah, but what about when two actual little people say it, though? When they say little people say it, I would say little person is much more of a polite way of saying it. There we go. There we right? go. Right. <laughs> but like when two little people say midget. Um, when is that weird? It's kind of weird, even though they. Say I didn't want to weird you out, but I also, you know, we. That's kind of we're trying to bring it back. Yeah, we're, we're trying to make the boundary a little bit more wide open for people. You know, oh, yes. we don't want to put so many boundaries on people. We want people to be accepted. Like that's right. Well, because we feel like there's a derogatory way to say everything. You know what I it mean? It is true. It depends on how you're saying it. So you know, I I don't feel like everybody is saying the word midget to be mean sometimes people just say it because that's all they know yeah that's all they've just, been taught yeah it's got it's kind of of a blur it's just like saying hoppa like um saying half um, asian oh yeah yeah hoppa is how you say i uh, see i never it's knew that. half japanese half white okay or yeah. hop it's actually half asian half white oh actually. half asian half white I'm are you kidding. are you sort of, asian well uh, only a quarter only half quarter, quarter. okay who's okay. who's uh Asian in your family? Well, it's my um, my mother's side. Of my family is um, it's start. It's way back. It's my great grandmother who is a full blood Japanese uh -huh. who moved to Mexico and got married, and that's where my gra in Mexico, and that's how my grandma was born. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so she met a Mexican gentleman, mm -hmm. and they got together, and then your grandma was born, and then ah, so okay. you're Latina. Oh yes. Nice. Mostly and, a Latino in the mother's side family. Okay. Oh, nice. Well, um, how did you get involved with Love on the Spectrum? Well, how do I get involved on Love on the Spectrum? I would say it's a, it's a long story. The reason why I... Let's do the... Sh the, the, the oh, how. Yeah. yeah, we got time. Yeah, we got time. We got, uh, we got time. Yeah. Let's start with the why and the how. Okay. okay. So with the why... Perfect. The why is, is that I really wanted to find love because I've been swamped like with um, working in animation, being a founder and CEO could be a great thing, but finding love is, it's hard to find because when you're, when you're on a busy schedule, how can I find love? So that's why I wanted to be on the show. And how do I get involved with that is because, um, is because the director of um, Love on the Spectrum, Keen O'Cleary, it's, he was looking for people on the autism spectrum that would like he was looking for auditions that are for the american version and and i was contacted by kian to see if they could schedule not all, because i was teaching animation at um spectrum laboratory at the time teaching the saturday classes and he was asking if we could be able to visit your place so we can interview you and your students and so <laughs> i was like delighted for this some um, opportunity this in 2019 i was interviewed along with some of my students on we were supposed to start filming in 2019 around spring or summer, but in 2020, unfortunately, the pandemic happened, yeah. which delayed yeah. it. When you were reached out to do this by Keenan, yeah, um, were you excited? Were you like, I was wow. like ecstatic, excited about this opportunity. This will give me a chance to like find find someone. Because you have to understand, love is hard for anyone to find. That's true. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter oh, if yeah. you're on the spectrum or a little person or just an average person. People are busy with work and stuff. 
So, you know, it's it's a normal thing to go through to to find love. It's it's difficult mm. in many ways. And even when you think you found love, you might not it down the line you might not even be in love anymore. It's well, it, love is love is a big thing. And it can be complicated at times. Very because, complicated. And can be and can be confu- confusing especially cuz um, I've also dated a neurotypical before. Uh-huh. What is what um Normal. A uh, neurotypical is a normal person? Um, a neurotypical is which means they they um, don't have language delays. They're able to like um, function. They're able to function. They know how to use social cues. It's natural for them. Yeah. For us, people on the autism spectrum, how do we understand social cues? How do we understand when it's appropriate and when it's inappropriate? Gotcha. I feel you, like... You I seem... Mean, yeah, yeah, you seem like you have normal social cues of when to react and how to react and stuff. However, it took me lots of training and that's why um, I got, that's why I've got some after school um, class, that's why I've taken after school classes from UCLA peers mm. about ah, social skills. Okay. And what do they teach you in those? Is it like stare at the person in the eye when you're talking to them? Well, or? making eye contact and I've also learned about, about flirting because in the flirting part is when, when I flirt with a person finding love, you just um, look, eye contact, smile, look away. <laughs> kind is that of how like, we do it? Is that okay. <laughs> yes? <laughs> That's a pretty good sign. Yeah, don't try and flirt with me, buddy, because <laughs> it's not going to work. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's flirting right there. That, you did yeah. very heavy for flirting. Well, I wasn't flirting with you. I was flirting with Sandy. So, hey. oh, so there you chill go. out, Jason. Okay. <laughs> wow. Sorry. <laughs> But Sandy is married. What are you talking about? Yeah. You can still flirt. You just don't do the other stuff. You know what I mean? Like, um, So on the show, because I know most reality shows are a little bit scripted. Did they script you in any way? Not at all. They're not no. yelling lines out you at you? No. Nope, not Everything. at all. They just ask me questions. They just allow me to be my true authentic self, be original, all this. That's what they've encouraged. That's awesome. And you were you were actually, I mean, no spoilers, but you were actually able to find love. It is true, yes. You're, you're in a committed relationship right now. That's true. Right? Is a this, Don, a is Don this, and I's relationship yeah, going Don. pretty strong, though he... Though um, one of the most important thing is, he, even though he's raised in the Catholic um, upbringing, um, he no, he understood. He knows how to be flexible. Whoa! You, well, what does that mean? <laughs> well, he's pretty open to dating and finding, you know, you know what? Well, something not safe for work. Oh, before, gotcha. Before yes. marriage. Before marriage. <laughs> Sex before marriage. That's right. I like that. Yes. Do you? That's what it's all about, dude. Because what if you get married <laughs> and the sex isn't good? And then you're married and stuck with this person and it's just awful. Yeah, I just don't want any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody wants any of that. So good, good for you. Mm-hmm. Good do, for you. Do you still have the original ring that he um, made you? Yeah, I still have it. It's actually in, in my house. I still kept it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Why, why don't you wear it? Um, well, the same reason I don't wear mine. <laughs> well, the next time, maybe the next time, um, I'll probably the next time I'll see a Don again. Oh, okay. Do you guys still date, go on dates? And we still do go on dates, but however, we talk each other into dates because our schedules are completely different. He has some um, call, he's finishing up college and he has work. He works as a security guard. I mean, he works as a security guard. For the Honda Stadium for fr- on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Aren't you afraid for him? Um, like working security guard, like that. That sounds like something dangerous, you know. It's a little bit, yeah. You know, especially working at a big kind of high volume foot traffic place, you know. Honda Stadium. That's where the Ducks play, right? The pond. Oh, the yes. Honda Pond so, Stadium. Honda. Okay. Yeah. I live over in that area, in Orange County. Oh my. Yeah. So I know the Honda Stadium very well. Yep. So next time when you see a Don and when you go to Honda Stadium, say hi to him. I will. Mm-hmm. I haven't been in a little, so now when I go, I'm going to look out for now, him. Now, I want to ask a question. Like for me, for instance, if I were just to limit myself from just dating, like in my world before I was married, to just dating little people, I would have never met my wife who made me so happy. 
mm. and, and and has been like my partner in crime, the love of my life, my soulmate. So, my question to you is: Is it like that for like? Are you limited to just dating people that are autistic? I'm not limited. Okay. I'm I'm th- I'm very flexible. I'm very open to like um, dating um. Pe- dating people with some different disabilities or di- or somebody who's neurotypical. Okay. As I've mentioned, I've dated a neurotypical before. Yes, yes, you have. And and and, and what was that just did it just not work out because Well, of, it's probably because sometimes relationships just don't work out in yeah. general. Yeah, it didn't work out with uh, me and Jordan. I okay. Well, speaking of, I've met Jordan in 2018 when I was at the um, the Palm Springs um, International Animation Festival yeah. and at um, Comic Con Palm Springs at the time, he I thought he was um he I thought he was good looking, but it after a couple while I guess it didn't click. Okay, that that happens in everyday love. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes it just doesn't click. That's why it's so hard to find. You know. Now, uh, is it with with you uh, before COVID happened? That was. Um, were you? Uh, because I, 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 I feel like a lot of people nowadays, all they do is find love on uh, internet dating. Like with me and him, like I met my wife on a tour. Like I, 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 I would meet girls at the bar, at the grocery store. Like <laughs> is nice. it or at a, you know, like uh, did you ever date guys like that? Like as far as like just meeting them randomly at a place that you didn't expect you were going to meet somebody? Um, I yeah, I would sometimes meet guys when a guy comes along. Um, usually comes along when I go to events like that, but yeah. not through dating app. I never done that though. Because I feel like that's and, such a big thing nowadays. It's like the dating apps, right? Well, like speaking from, of dating apps, um, I was just um, a little nervous about dating apps, especially because there could be a creep that you could um want to date. They could, sometimes they get too excited. I was a little intimidated by that idea. It sounds scary. Because you don't know what you're getting. I mean, the stuff that they're putting out there could be lies. Yes. We, yeah. We talked about it with Elmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, we had we had a guy who came from... Um, he's a little person. He's a oh, little wow. person. And he came from the Amish community. And the he Amish escaped. community... Yeah. They don't have TV. They don't let, do anything with the outside world. No social media, nothing. He finally came out. And he started wanted to start dating, and we're like, "Have you gone on any apps?" And he's like, "I tried one one time, and the girl wasn't who I expected." And I told him, "Yeah, they're gonna do show you one picture and tell you certain things, and when whoever's gonna show up, it's gonna be completely different." Oh my! Yeah. So, gee, it's and called s- getting catfish, right? Yes. Well, tell me about <laughs> it because I'm um, getting catfish. It can be get is a trap. And speaking of. Um, I've had a previous podcast episode with um, Heather, who is um she she has her own show called Dating with um, Heather. I was on I was on that show with her, and she did talked about her experience, and that's why she created the app called Hula, which oh. is about which is an app that is um, re- that is very honest and trustworthy. Oh, okay. Why why do you say that? What makes it so honest and trustworthy? Well, it's because they recom- they will do um it's a special dating app that is that. You can go on dates with which which is recommended, the most recommended person. Oh, why did she get on that? She, well, she because she got catfished. Okay. And at but, worst, but she created it. Yeah, she created it because she got catfished by okay. from another from an app, and then no. But how how do you know to trust what 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 this app does as opposed to other ones? Well, it's because they're recommended, but unfortunately for um, Heather, she got raped. Oh. Oh God! All right. Let's. I'm sorry to bring that up. I, I that was not the intention behind that. Why are but, you looking at? You're no, like, no. Hey, I was gonna like, say like, wow, that's that's it, that's, it, that's, that's out that's there in like the world on another level, right? Yeah, there. and it does happen, and that's a big reason it's hard to trust dating apps. Mm-hmm. I don't do dating apps myself because of like who I am, and you know I don't want to be out there, you know, trying to do that. So. Well, you're confident enough in yourself that, like, that's wherever true. you go, someone's gonna be like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> yeah. So, want to hang funny. out? I'll get you drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, back to your anime. Mm-hmm. Are you planning on working on another movie? Have you did or another 
kind of series show? Well, um, recently, um, one of my students, um, Peyton, which I teach during one-on-one animation sessions, has finished her animated short film. Uh-huh. And I am definitely am so excited that we are going to premiere it at Comic-Con this, er, this summer of July, which... I'm so excited about this. Oh, How long is the short film? The short film's about eight minutes long, okay. which I'm very happy about. Um, Peyton, especially because when I see my students um, t- doing take my animation classes, I see the growth and how capable they can be. Yeah. And, and how ambitious they can be with their fun little animation, that the animations that they create. You got a lot of passion for this, huh? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, another addition. Well, speaking of Star Cross Destinies is premiering at the Marvel's Media Film Festival as uh, well, created by my another student one on one from my one on one sessions, Natalie. Yeah. Uh, how many students do you teach? Well, sixty two. Oh mm. wow. Uh, and they're all from all over the world? That's right. All of from different parts of the world. And they're all autistic? They're on the spectrum. Okay. When you say on the spectrum, is, am I saying it like uh, in aff- an offensive way? Am no. I saying autistic? Well, you could rather you call it autistic or I don't. But my perf- my preference is people on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum is oh. my preference. Autistic on the spectrum, whether you call it. Now, with autism, because I love learning. I, I, and and yep. when we have, we had Chaz and we were learning a lot. And with autism, there's different levels of it. That's true. As far as like being... Like there's type one and type two and a type three. Okay, and so you're autistic. What would you say you are? Type one, which means um, mildly impaired, which means some uh, mild needs, which means I don't have much needs. While the level three, on the other hand, is the ones that have that has the most needs. Okay, and most needs like they're like even like it, like doing the classes like what you did to like not be socially awkward and all that. That that doesn't work on them. Um, if they're nonverbal, which means they can't really talk. Okay, or nonverbal at all. Okay. Or their or their attention deficit or their <sighs> attention spans are just very short. Okay, I feel like my landlord's um, my landlord when I used to live in Hollywood, his kid was autistic, and I think he must have been severe because he was a he would have these art shows, and he and his son painted a lot of like Disney stuff, and oh, it was yes. beautiful. He was really good at it. And he would have these art shows, but he couldn't be around loud, loud noise. So he would be like the guy at this art show, and it was all his art. So he had to wear headphones and stuff because if not, the noise the would noises. kind of make yeah. him go nuts. You know? Yeah, so. it, that definitely no nuts. Misophonic. There's okay. a term called misophonic. Okay, I, is I, I can't. Okay, I won't say nuts. So misphonic. Yes. <laughs> okay, misphonic is when you can't handle noise. Yes, or the dislike of noise. There's also a thing called misphonia. Yes, I think, misphonia. Where, yes. Where where like people chewing, loud chewing, like just makes you makes you uh, annoyed, right? Yes. <laughs> I think that can bother. I think my wife people. has that. I think yeah, that can bother. She's always like, "Can you stop eating like that?" <laughs> <laughs> um. So anime was one of your first loves mm. yes. that you love to do. What made you then decide to be like, I want to help and show other people on the spectrum how to now take anime to this level? It's not just about anime. It's some Western. It's all types of styles of animation. Uh-huh. When every time when I think of anime, I think of um. Japanese anime influenced animation or Jap- like anime from Japan. Okay. The style is the is something that take I would take influence mostly from. Uh huh. But animation can come in different styles. Yeah. But how do I help on um, people on the? But why do I wanted to start this mission is because of the autism and um, unemployment levels. There's it's the employment statistics that just uh, makes people there. T- people on the spectrum are so talented, but the most important thing is how do they get into the um the workforce the work. What causes them to not to get them unemployed is due to communication and social skills barriers. Yeah. So I'm trying to. So that's why I started my company to help bridge that gap to help people on the spectrum, help educate, elevate, empower people on the spectrum by turning their passion in animation into a career and help them elevate their communication and social skills to be more accepted into the workforce. Nice. Now, question because real we, quick though yeah, before yeah. you. Someone watching this episode who hasn't heard about you yet or doesn't know how to reach you, how could they join one of your classes and be part of it? Because this is very interesting. 
And I could see someone, maybe one of our fans that has a brother, sister, aunt, uncle, and they say, oh, that's exactly where I need this, this is what person. Uncle Louie yeah. could do. <laughs> and how yeah. could they find you to maybe get some lessons from you? Oh, that's definitely a wonderful question. So um, <laughs> you can f you could definitely just, uh, they can definitely sign up at dannyacademy.com slash free, which means all they have to do is register. Danny with an I. Yeah, Danny okay. with an I. DannyAcademy.com yeah. mm -hmm. slash free. Yeah. It's definitely it's short for the Danny Mation um, link it's where they could register for a free introduction introductory animation class. Yeah. It's every it, it it occurs almost every Saturday when we have available. It happens from eleven AM Pacific to it's eleven AM to one PM Pacific. Oh, two hour class. I love that name. Perfect. Animation. It's, it's a so group good. class. It is a group class for everybody okay. that um, wants to. So they to. can zoom in yes. to the class. Nice. And you teach it. Mm -hmm. Is that easy for you to teach like a Zoom class? Yes. It, 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 have I'm you ever taught at other like where it's not Zoom? Or do you focus mostly on Zoom classes? I focus mostly on Zoom classes. I've tried other. Um, I tried online other platforms before, but um, Zoom is definitely my number one go-to thing when it comes to teaching animation. Is that because like uh, that people that are on the spectrum are, because you want to welcome people from all over the world. That's right. Whereas to just in Los Angeles, where it could be a smaller number. Yeah. You know, yeah. but okay. Summer. Oh. summer, and I also teach summer animation workshops in person. So every June I teach and I teach in Florida at Animation Gets Real in USF in Tampa for the first two weeks and then in Miami Dade in the two the next two weeks is Miami Dade in person and then the third one virtual. Oh. How many people join those classes? So usually yes, about usually average. usually around forty forty to sixty, depending oh. on the um the registration. Nice. I couldn't imagine getting questions from like forty to sixty people. That's a lot of like questions you got to answer, dude. Like, as I yeah. know, I would have questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're very, your social skills are very high up oh, there. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Although there's still so much, I still have a long way to go. Now, I had a question because when I was explaining to you my, my landlord's son, who was on a type three spectrum level, do you have people in your animation class that are on a type three? spectrum um, level but they're just really really good at animation well i don't schools. think i've ever um taught a class to a nonverbal before okay but as long as they have um as long as their attention span is great and if they find a communication device i could still teach them if as long as they have a communication device that will allow them to communicate mm. oh, i don't nice. mind if they just use a voice some communicator like say yes i certainly will do like that. yeah mm. got it Got it. And and we do welcome assistance. Yeah. We do welcome anybody that assists the um, the class or anybody that sits in. Yeah. Um, I had a question because uh, the Nick Novicki Easter Seals uh, competition is happening in like two weeks. Oh, yes. Are you going to be a part of that? Well, definitely I'm going to be part of it. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be leading a film. I'm just uh, definitely going to be... Part of You're the involved film. in uh, with someone that is making a film. That's right. That's really cool. What film's coming up in this one? Is this the one? This one's a body uh, buddy comedy. Buddy comedy. That's the genre for the film. Uh, for oh, the, for the so challenge. They, so the challenge so the, for this it's, one is it's like a, a four day film challenge. Okay. And uh, and then like basically they give you the topic, which is a bu buddy comedy, but then they give you like the genre of it, as far as like. Um, and then what, what props you have to have in it the last day. So uh, you can start writing it, you know, and getting your idea in the head in your head, but then yeah. when they give you, Oh, it's a noir or or it's this kind of thing or it's that we want it filmed in like a haunted house or whatever. Got um, it. That's they give you that the last few days. Got it, got so it. So then got people can't they give like, you the full prompt. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. In the full genre. You have to have a Polaroid picture in it. You have to have a clock in it. You have wow. to, that's how the challenge works. Got and she it. does it all with animation. Ah, okay. Well, thank you. So is your so the people that you're doing it with? They're it's it's they're they're choosing to go the route of animation. That's right. Okay, cool. What's do you can you give a secret away of what their film's going to be kind of about? Well, um, I've got um, I've got one one 
I've got more than one project to think of. Um, my good friend of mine uh, that I've known of, Ben Ashvin, who is a very talented filmmaker on the spectrum, is creating a short buddy comedy about himself and his cat. Oh, that's a good buddy combo. Yeah. Buddy combo, which I didn't expect, and I'm I'm very happy to work with. There's another one that I couldn't think of, but it's about uh, guys traveling through time. Oh. Mm. Dude, we should have done one, the buddy combo. I'm going to be away on my comedy yeah. tour. Yeah, you're Oh, gonna, my goodness. Yeah, my buddy's going to be gone. Whoa. I do stand-up comedy. You got to come to one of my shows. I can't wait. Yeah. Nick Novicki also does buddy comedy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also does um, comp stand-up comedy. Uh, he does buddy comedy and stand-up comedy. <laughs> 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 I love how she's laughing over there. Sandy. Um, do you have any plans uh, to... I know you're helping a lot of people with their projects. Do you have any solo projects coming out? Well, um, I'm helping out with another project called Too Smart to Be Trendy, and it's starring the um, the voice of Rosie O'Donnell. Oh, okay. She has, and what's so special about Rosie O'Donnell is not only she's that famous, she also has a child on the autism spectrum. Well, originally Dakota, they just like to be called Clay. Yeah. And they were, and Clay, what? they were my animation student from the last year's animation workshop, the Los Angeles workshop location. Oh, okay. okay. So happy to have get Rosie lost involved. Point. No, no, no. When you said Clay, he just his name's Dakota, but he wants to be called Clay. They, it's a, well, daughter, they, them, actually. Uh, okay. <laughs> you, you good? Yeah. Fine. So they is one person. Yes. They, them. Is that confusing to you at all? Because that always that confuses me. Confuses some it's, people because some um, if you're. If you're referring to a non-binary, that's why they use they, them pronouns, which is an accepted term nowadays. No, I know it's all accepted, and that's perfectly fine, and I'm willing to adapt. I just sometimes get confused. I was confused at first at, <laughs> when I heard the they, them pronouns. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because it always confuses me. <laughs> what about you, Jason? Yeah, but I run into nowadays too many people that they, them, he, she, that, you know, yeah. you just got to roll with it. Cat, I, dog. <laughs> no, it's not like that. <laughs> you, just, you have to go with it. So. I do go with it. I, I always go with it. I, yeah. I don't want to disrespect anyone. But I always feel like it's just, why Why can't I just call you by your name? You know? Yeah. Oh, yes. You know, like, how about I just call you by your name instead of doing this whole they, them thing? But I get it. And that's just me. I'm old. <laughs> I'm stubborn. And I understand that. Okay, well, yeah. we'll respect that. Yeah, yeah. we'll Thank respect you, it. Punch. Oh, I don't know God. how don't much respect. Don't try to sit here like. <laughs> I don't know how don't, much don't respect I will give you, but don't, I will don't respect Don't try to sit here like <laughs> Mr. Adapt over here. No, I'm not adapting. No, like, I'm respecting. I, okay. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> He's on his best behavior right now. Yes, I am. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I hope finally. you are. Someone's got to be. Yeah, because definitely you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think you had a question for Danny you wanted to ask we don't have tootsies here so we can't ask you know but I think you wanted to you ask. wanted to ask him. I didn't want to ask you wanted to ask okay so we we are trying to get sponsored by Midgies or by Tootsie Roll oh yeah they have this candy called Midgies Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's out there. It's been out there for a long time. We used we to bring them to it. the show all the time. We love it. Oh. We're, they're definitely never going to sponsor us. But what we ask a lot of the females that come on the show is we always offer them a Tootsie Roll candy. We don't have one. We go, would you like a midgey? <laughs> and then we yeah. go, and then they go, yes. And then we go, actually, have you ever been with a midgey? <laughs> That's a joke. I it's kind of, of a joke. It's yeah, a, it's, it's definitely a joke. It's a play on words. Yes. But, but uh, yeah. It's like the mini version of the Tootsie Roll. Exactly. Yes. Just like Ponch is the mini version of a normal guy. Did you say a mini version? Version. <laughs> not virgin. <laughs> definitely not virgin. No, not, not, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when that so happened. So what he's saying is, have you ever dated a little person? Yes. Have you ever dated a little person? Have you ever been with I a little person? I never ever have dated a little person before, but I'm open yeah, there you go, Punch. Hey guys, but, but as <laughs> for all my out, little people family out there, she's taken. At, she's taken at the moment, but she is open to little people. Yeah, which is great. You're a very pretty girl, Thank Danny. Thank you so much. Yeah, 
Uh, Isn't there a particular celebrity that really loves your show? That well, you, there's a lots of people. I'm, that... I, I know there's a lot, but you mentioned someone in one of your stories or Instagram things that there's a celebrity that that really loves your show. Is it Bradley Cooper? Oh yes, Bradley yeah. Cooper. Bradley Cooper I have loves her show. Big, big time. Yeah. It yeah. was a whole big time when I saw Bradley Cooper loving the show, loving the spectrum. It was like, oh. What do you think of Bradley Cooper? Is he a I handsome thought, guy to yeah, you? Yeah, I thought he was really he like a handsome a, guy, yes. Yeah, he's very handsome. He's a good guy, too. He's a good-looking dude. Yeah. Probably he's, groomed and um, always outgoing. Yeah. Properly groomed, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's where you got to do your hair right. You got to smell good. Tell he's good. Much. He's naturally good at that. He knows this routine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is? Which is, like, he knows what to do, and especially because he has to wear a t- particular type of attire. Which is perfect. Yeah. Uh, He's a suited man. Do you drive? I drive, yes. Yeah. I didn't drive till I was like 26. Oh, and, my goodness. Yeah. And trust me, when, when, when I started driving, none of my buddies wanted to be in the car with me. <laughs> They're like, I hate the way you pull on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> like they were like dude so, oh, they were just like always constantly like this guy's gonna kill us yep so but you do goodness. drive yes that's I do that's cool cool but you've put business first lately more than love huh that's right that's good that's a good thing to do to get all your uh, blocks in the right order then find love that is true and especially but, because yeah. um even though it's finding love is a great thing, business is business could be a number one priority, and the second is love is my second. I was just trying to be sure to balance things. Life is that's my life now. Now yeah. I know that um, you and Don got this thing going on, but like we were talking about earlier, love is unexpected, and it always comes when you're least looking for it. Who's Don? Don is the uh, guy. Adon. Adon. Oh, Adon. Adon Correa. Adon. Yeah, Adon. He's Adon or Adon. A- Adon. E. It's E, right? Or e- Edon. No, Edon. it's A D O N. He has Edon sounds Filipino. Is he Filipino? No, he's Mexican. Okay. okay. Yeah. Adon. He is it's A D A N. He has a fa- he has you know, in Mexican language, they have that fancy apostrophe above the A. Yes, that's they how do. he pronounces it. And they have he would Enyes, know about that. and they have Enyes Acuna over the end. Because his real name is Jason Acuna. Acuna. I have Acuna, a Mexican yes. last name, and nice. it has the Enyes. Because you're Mexican. Over the, I am Mexican. Yeah, there. Yeah. Though so Bowman you're is. You're a Mexican that doesn't speak Spanish. I speak German. You're a I'm Mexican. Also, can't. I'm also you're a Mexican. German. Can't. I'm also German. <laughs> well, I'm my, a German can. German can. German You can speak German. Well, yes, I'm a German speak German too. right now. Say ich something. Ich Deutsch jedes Jahr, every day with my family, with my family. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's your yeah. Thing, yeah. Huh? yeah. 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 <laughs> so we should go out one day. I'll be speaking Spanish. You'll speaking, be speaking German. We'll really bug people. Well, we <laughs> should go to the Oktoberfest <laughs> somewhere. I have, we have Oktoberfest in Montrose. Yeah. Of course. Is that where you live in Montrose? Yes. Okay. Near, uh, actually, Lock, in the hills of Lock and Yard, Flint Ridge, uh, Montrose is actually down the street. Okay. So what I was trying to ask is, like we were talking... You have your thing going with the dawn, but you're 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 a super busy woman, and love always comes when you least expect it, yes. when you're not looking for it. So what happens if someone approaches you when you least expect it and 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 asks you on a date? I would definitely. And, and it's, it's someone that it, yeah, it, and it's unexpected. It's he seems very charming, mm-hmm. and, and it's everything you're looking for in a guy. Also, would most, you consider it? I definitely would consider that, though. Uh, I would. Um, Get some help from Sandy and Patrick. Does this is this guy? Um, I would question to Sandy and Patrick. Is this guy um, respectful? All of this, my aunt knew, and my aunt knows. So does that mean that your aunt has to meet him? Oh, uh, certainly, yes. Okay, so she could come on the date with you guys and make sure that he's not doing anything sleazy. That's true. Okay, is that is that right, Sandy? Not always. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. I mean, some guys. Some guys are really good at hiding the sleaziness. You know? They let it out. Yeah. Asked you if you would go on a date behind the Don's back. Oh uh, no, I didn't mean. It. I don't want to start any trouble or anything. I'm just saying <laughs> it doesn't seem. I uh, or I mean, I don't. Got if, it. Got it. I, I'm just saying, love comes when you least expect it. So I, I don't know if you ever, if someone ever approached you, and you know, and you weren't looking for it, but he was everything that you were looking for. Mm-hmm. In a man. And you were you know. still dating, dating a don, which 
I would not, um, I, I would just um, wait till a Don, I think I'll still go on dates with a Don though. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, she will say you're a lovely gentleman, but I have to pass. That's what you would say? Yes. Okay. Yeah. See, I knew where she was going to go with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, do you find that, um, being on camera, is that, is that hard for you? I don't think so because being on camera, I didn't mind being on camera at all. And besides, the um, the the number of um, it is a small number of um, peep of camera people filming me, and mm-hmm. I didn't mind. And they also they also know how to handle people on the spectrum well. Mm-hmm. Nice. Now I didn't watch all the episodes. My wife is a huge fan. You know my oh, wife; wow. she loves you on there. Um, what turns you off about a guy? What turns me off about this guy is that if I find anything that is um suspicious or if he's hiding something or like hmm there's something wrong with him or he's not seemed to be like um responsible like like shady uh, characters yes yeah, some no, shady characters but what it what would be me. suspicious like if he like if grabbing. he's just lying about something he would grab or groping if groping yeah so you don't want him to put his arm around you yeah like groping or like he would say like be honest with me talk to me okay. that's the part i don't like Okay. Or he's too demanding, or if he's like I'm touching me inappropriately, that's when I see something suspicious. There's something wrong with this guy. Okay. That does that happen? That like, happens. Uh, have you have have you dealt with that? Well, like I, besides on the camera stuff. Well, I kind I dealt with that. You you dealt with that on the show. Oh well, yeah. Well, the guy was suspicious. Well, I kind of dealt with that. He wasn't touching or being inappropriate on camera, but what that was like. But then after being filmed off camera, when we saw each other again and wanted to hang out with me again, that's when he was like groping me mm. off camera. So that is that that's what women call the ick now. Yeah, I believe. Right. What? I never yeah. heard this. What is this? Gigi was talking about the, the ick where like a dude does something like where you're just like that one that he does that one thing. Like maybe he like picks his nose or something oh, and girls are like yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i ain't getting with that dude you know got like it. They, they call it the ick got it yeah. interesting i never really heard about the ick before that, that's what uh you could look it up i i had to look it up <laughs> well, i know i did but it's uh it's i don't know if, i i don't think it happens too much with dudes it'll happen with like a dude if like he's hanging out with a chick for the first time and she like farts you know <laughs> and you're like yeah i'm not doing no like, nah, i'm not going well, this is where it ends, all right? Like, <laughs> oh, I am getting very tired. I'm gonna You're go like, to bed. Yeah, I'm going to bed. Dude. <laughs> I was, uh, I, uh, I stayed the night with Jason last night. We actually, he got a hotel because we didn't. He lives far, I live far, and we were doing this today. And we and, had a podcast. And yesterday. we had a podcast yesterday, so we didn't want to go and leave and then have to drive all the way back. And I was staying at his hotel, and he turned the lights off. I, I got a. A cot, and I just farted so loud. What? It was so loud, and it stunk so bad. We ate barbecue, and he was just like, "But dudes can do that, you know." Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, she farts too. Oh, yeah. Danny, you fart. Everyone well, farts. Everybody farts. <laughs> okay, that's how you know. Okay, if Don's a keeper, a Don, a Don, a Don. A Don. A Don. If a Don's a keeper, you got to fart in front of him. Hey, if you, I would not do that. I so would when do you, when is when is the proper time to fart in front of a dude? Private. You have to do it privately. Yeah. No. Well, not on camera, but you do it like. What do you mean privately? Like you're like, like go in the bathroom to fart. Oh, she's oh, saying okay. she's never. So you're, ne- you're never gonna fart in front of a guy. I won't. <laughs> Not just not just guys, but anybody. My my uh, wife told me, and I didn't even know this, but she was like. She's like, because we were discussing stuff like that, and I, and I, she's like, I don't even know why I stay with you. She's like, you were, you were doing number twos in the bathroom with the door open three weeks in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, sweetheart, come here. <laughs> well, that's love, buddy. That is that's love. That's love. why we're still together. Yep. Yeah. So never farting in front of a dawn ever. Well, unless if we're well, it really depends. Well, I. Not in front of a, do- but as long as we get to know each other a little bit more. Yeah, but it, say if you're like like hanging out, right? And you, you know, like you're eating, you're in the middle of a beautiful conversation together, or whatever. You guys are just like in it, you know, and 
you don't want to leave to do a little toot. You, know, you, <laughs> want, you, you want to go into the other room and do a toot and then come back? Like, I don't think it would be such a big I deal. I would say, like, excuse me, Adon, I got to use the rest for one second, okay? And then just... <laughs> 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 well, that's good. You're you're a, you're you're a lady. Oh, that's thank what you, you know. That's what ladies do. They're not gonna. They're not. I I know dudes that they're like, dude, a, a girl farted and I just kicked her out. Yeah, <laughs> like she farted in bed and I just kicked her the fuck out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you kicked her out for farting. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. Do you care? Yeah. Do you care? No, I don't care. Right? Yeah. I'm like, look yeah. at us. Do I like do, well, we no don't care. I don't She's never been that close to a guy. Got it. Oh, so a dawn. She totally farts around us, around the house. So, so why is family. it okay around her? Well, my well, aunt's used to farting. <laughs> well, <laughs> she farts too. Yes, she farts okay, too. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I. It's okay for me to like uh, fart at home because we're family. Got it. Okay. I got we're that. family. Okay, yeah. so it's not just because you're trying to impress this guy. Not just to impress this guy. It's if we fart. It's family thing. I like that. That's going to be a quote. Yeah, if we, like, fart, if we fart, it's a it's, it's, it's a family, family thing. thing. Yeah, that's cool with me. That's a cool quote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you and Adon are are you're new, mm -hmm. and you're still getting used to each other, but you're dating. That's yes. who you're dating. D is he going to come to any of your animation shows coming up? Are you going to bring Hold him your as like I a date? I definitely would invite Adon. I, what I do is I ask Adon to join for the events, and Adon would ask me. We would um, hold hands, all this. Yeah. The most recent um, event that we went to was the was the Gwen Luminary Awards that we went that we went early March, where I received the award for excellence from Gwen. Gwen is acronym for the Global Women Women's Entrepreneurship Network. Wow. Oh wow! Thanks to Tess Casasor, the that's head a big of it. deal, man. That's Excellent. it. Yeah, the award for excellence. Yeah, for women. First, Never received an award for anything. Uh, she's gotten an award from an organization outside of the office. That that's what I was gonna say. Wow. Oh yes. <laughs> what was your actual award? My actual award. It just says um, for tremend for helping out. This award is for um, helping the autism community, making, making a beneficial difference to the autism community by helping them find, by helping them find their passion in animation and make this part of their employment. It's like, it's. That's big. Yeah. You're one of the first people to be noticed for that with this award being. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, that's a it's big also deal. totally unexpected. Yeah. No, mm. that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank oh, thank you so much. Yeah. And Adon uh, accompanied you to yep, this award? Yep, he did, came award. alongside with some other fellow cast members like Abby and David. Abby yeah. and David were there as well, and their family. Oh, nice. So you had the whole love cast there. Oh, yes. Well, once in the U.S. Even yeah. Sabo Garg. Sorry, no, no, no. He didn't come, though. Yeah. Hmm. That's awesome, though. No, congratulations. That's a big award. Thank you. And to be recognized and be one of the first is a big thing. So how many dates have you and Adon gone on? Well, as far as I could remember, we've gone on around one, two, and a three, and a four, five, six, seven-ish, seven-ish seven or eight-ish dates, including events. Yeah. Mm. What kind of food do you like? I really like a variety of different types of foods, different types of cuisines. I know, but I what's your favorite one? Just hot pot. I would say hot pots. What? What is that? <laughs> hot pot? You don't have a hot pot, dude? No, is that a? It's a hot pocket. Oh, a hot. No pocket. hot pot. I meant hot oh, pot. Hot pot. Yeah, I don't know oh. what that is. What is that? Like soups. Yes, like soups, like fruit. Asian soup, hot pots. I really like love pho. It. Do you like pho? I like pho too. I love pho. But I but but I'm talking about Chinese Taiwanese hot hot pot. Mm. Mm. So like, is that more of a creamy one? More, actually, more like um, hot pot that you see in that you saw, that I saw in China. I fell in love with the Chinese hot pot cuisine, especially because you get to cook certain things inside this hot pot. So I, it's not ramen. It's not like it's kind of like ramen. You could put ramen in it. You could put any ingredients in it and okay. make something. So that's what you like. You yes. like making it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Nice. It's about making hot pot, which is I think. 
which is the most fun cuisine I love. Now, does Adon know this about you? Well, um, Adon, I don't think I, he knows. Okay, about Adon, the- when you watch this show, <laughs> now you know how to really impress her. He likes Mexican. He likes Japanese. He likes, he's pretty much open to many things. I even oh. had him try escargot. Oh, nice! I love escargot. Well, mm. Adon was um, was a, was pretty um, hesitant at first, but um, he tried escargot. He's he takes it. He takes it like a man. Nice. I got a question. Have you ever had menudo? I've tried menudo. Yes, do you like I menudo? like menudo. Yes. Nice. Say the word menudo. Menudo. Menudo okay. is um, it's beef tripe soup in yeah. from Mexico. I like those stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm not a big not fan. A <laughs> not the van yeah uh i eat, eat it with my friends uh every sunday so often and i was telling poncho about it and i thought since we're talking food i'd bring it up and see if you've had it i have a question no this isn't no i can't do that you one. don't have a question Thank yeah, i you. can't do that one now you need to definitely have menudo with me bud okay. <laughs> yeah because i enjoy menudo pozole any exotic soups nice yeah the they're both ex- good and the most exotic mexican thing i've ever tried is um chapelines have okay. you tried chapelines no what's chapelines it's um grasshoppers oh mexican grasshoppers you know these grasshoppers chapulin Colo- colorado i remember watching that show there you but go chapulin that is a grasshopper yes grasshopper okay. where did locusts or grasshoppers well, actually, El Chapulín Colorado? No, it's and El Chavo. Chavo del Ocho. I, like, I love El Chavo del Ocho. I, I like the animated one because okay. it's so cute. Yeah, really no, funny. it is cute. It's a good show. Where <laughs> did you eat Grasshopper at? Well, it's in, as far as I could remember, um, I would say in, um, I would say when we're in Cabo. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Do you travel to Cabo a lot? Um, I, that was my first time in Cabo oh, last year. Oh, okay. Got it. And where do I eat in? Ch- and there's another exotic food I've tried in China. I had okay. starfish, and I had um, I had starfish in China, and then I had um, the the silk larva, silk larva, but eh, didn't taste good. Silk larva, silk moth larva. I was oh. gonna try a tarantula, but Sadie said no. Uh, okay, I've eaten, uh, I've drank cobra's blood, wow. and it comes oh, wild boys, right? Yeah, wild boys. It comes from, so cobras, you know, are poisonous, but their liver filters their blood. So we actually had the blood from their liver. Interesting. Yeah. So it was good. It was good? Yeah. It, you Just drink it, it, in like a, like a you drink it in a shot glass with a okay. mix of alcohol and it tastes, you, you taste the alcohol, but then the rest tastes like a, like putting a rusty penny in your mouth. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, it was very it interesting. good for this? Rusty that's pennies? That's exactly what it's good it's for. Good. It's an aphrodisiac. Yes, that's exactly Ooh. what, that's how they explained it. The Kenyan yeah. tribe guys were like, why do you drink this? And they're, Wait, all they did. you've been to Kenya? Yeah. Well, Kenya, speaking Africa. of, um, Abby and David has been to Kenya. Yeah, they have. A- uh, David took Abby. For because, the safari. Yeah, because she wanted to I see remember lions. That episode. Her oh, favorite yes, animal is the lion. That. Yes. What's she, your favorite animal? Well, my favorite animal, I would say, I love cats and I love hedgehogs. Hedgehogs are my favorite animals. Oh, really? Yeah. My wife's favorite animal is the, what is the, God, it wow, is. you're, Emily, you're married to this guy, you can't even remember what your favorite animal is. It's a sloth, but the baby <laughs> sloth, the baby that's, sloth. Yes. That's why you married this guy. <laughs> You're a baby sloth. I, I am well, a baby sloth. You're a baby sloth. Well, speaking of, I get to held a hedgehog once at a county fair. Oh, nice. For the and, first and time. That's, I, yeah, that, and that's your one of your favorite animals. Yes, that indeed. Even though um, hedgehogs are, they're, when it comes to holding a hedgehog, you have to be very careful because of the spines. Yeah. Mm. It's good if you pet it, but when they're scared, when they're spooked, they hide in their, yep. they make that noise when they're hiding in their, when they're rolling into a ball, they make that certain noise, like shh, shh, yeah. shh, 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 shh. <laughs> they're shushing you like that it sounds like a <laughs> they're cute animals though yes so do you have a pet cat i do i have six cats at home oh nice i got seven. Oh my goodness yeah so you guys having a cat competition or something yeah, well i'm um, speaking became... of um i especially two exotic breeds i have a nebelung named dusty and a norwegian force cat um we just call him Ouija because he's such a huge one. <laughs> Ouija. That's, cute. That's a cute name. Awesome. Yeah. Well, 
Oh, we, are we, are we yeah, coming we to the end of the episode. The time. Oh yes, yes, yes. Danny, you have been an amazing guest. Oh yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, of for course. having me be part of Little Revolution. It's a big honor to be part of this wonderful podcast and a great conversation with you. It's really nice meeting you, Jason. Nice and, to meet you uh, too. It's really nice catching up with you, Poncho. Yeah. So, um, are we gonna do this? Are we gonna? Okay, we could. It's nice seeing yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for thank coming you. on our show. Yeah. We'd love so to have much. you again down the line when we can You're talk very more sweet. about future projects. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. You got it. Thank you for coming on. You guys did talk about uh, New York and uh, singing. You know, oh, I forgot oh. You, know, you, you know what I was thinking? Because she does animation, you know how you were th- maybe we could. Uh, down the line, we could pair to make a little animation thing of me and you for Ooh, Little Revolution. Oh, that would nice. be perfect. We would love that. That you know what I mean? Like yeah, that yeah, yeah. Like, a, like how we were thinking of creating little, like a beginning montage with a song. That would be awesome. It would, it would be rock and roll, but like we'd pick the song. But if you created like something cool, coming out, yeah, coming yeah. out. Like, oh yeah. yes. Like, if you can start getting the wheels turning on that, that'd be that awesome. would be really yes. cool. We we pay you money. The character design of you guys. Yeah. yeah. What, one more thing we want to ask about. We know you're going to New York soon. And what's one of the big things you're going to get to do in New York? Well, definitely going to be on stage in Broadway and singing at the very end at Neil Diamond's The Beautiful Noise. Sweet Caroline. No. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Good what times, times never seem so, so good. So, so good. So good. So good. So good. <laughs> I've been inclined. Nice. There we go. To believe they never would. Oh, no, no. 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 We'll keep that in. Yes. <laughs>